I work with a company called Qtrax, which is spelled Q-T-R-A-X, um, Qtrax.com. What it is is a free and legal peer-to-peer uh, -peer music service. So it's kind of like LimeWire, but it's legal. What I want to kind of talk to you about in addition to what I'm doing right now is how technology uh, changes business models and what happens when certain industries don't adapt to them. When industries are very slow to react to it or they don't come up with creative solutions, what happens to those businesses? And really specifically, I'll tell you a little bit about the music business and quick history and where it is today. Last year, one billion songs were sold as singles. Um, does anyone have an estimate of how many songs, how many files were traded over peer-to-peer? -peer? 40 billion, okay? So that's 40 to one. Now, granted, one billion is just singles. That's what's sold. You know, you're not looking at everything. I think there was actually 428 million full album units that were sold. So that's CDs, that's downloads. The entire size of the music business, the music industry last year, is estimated at $30 billion, which is down $10 billion over the last 10 years. Last year alone, CD sales dropped 17%. That's double-digit drops. 2006, 2007, 2008, double digits. Before that, single digits. So you're looking at 30, 40% drop in just the last couple years. That, that's pretty scary. Does anyone understand how peer-to-peer how -peer works? Plus or minus? All right, I'll, I'll give you a quick description, right? A traditional model. This is a server. This is where all the files are kept, right? And there's all of you guys, and you want to get a file. It's kind of the way iTunes works. You each come here, and you get the file. So it would look like it would look like a big spoke, like a you know a wheel hub. All of you are on the outside. Here's the server on the inside. Now the way peer to peer works is that you all become servers. Every one of you has one of these with your entire computer, and via a piece of software which you download, any of you can link up with each other. You link up with each other directly. You want his music, her music. What's even more powerful is BitTorrent. So Ted mentioned BitTorrent. The way BitTorrent, BitTorrent used to be a little bit more complicated to use. So BitTorrent's basically an advanced peer-to-peer. -peer. And the way it works, or the way it used to work, is you needed two things. One is you needed a search engine, kind of like a Google, that would go out and search all these things called torrents. Then you would need a client to actually go out and get them. So it was like a two-part process. The way that that works, and I'll see if I can keep it real simple, is let's say we're in peer-to-peer, -peer and you all have your own servers and you're all trading music, right? BitTorrent actually allows for what they call like shared computing. So it can take any one file. You want a file. You want Little Wayne Lollipop. And 15 people here have Lollipop. You can actually pull down from all those people at once bits and pieces of that file. And it comes down really, really quick. Now, for music, that means you went from I want Lollipop to I'll just get Little Wayne's album. So Lollipop takes you know, 30 seconds. The whole album takes five, five minutes. How about when someone zips it all up and it's Lil Wayne's entire music collection since he started, plus all his remixes, plus this, and you get it in like 10 minutes. That's, that's a pretty compelling proposition, right? 1995 is kind of the beginning of the internet. By 1999, you had Napster. Does anyone remember Napster? All right, so Napster's like LimeWire. Um, they managed to put it out of business, one of the few. They actually bought it and then turned it into a sales model. It didn't work. It failed. So by 1999, 20 million people were using LimeWire. I mean, uh, Napster. Real, real, real quick. Like that year, they launched it. Boom. So that's 1999. Now it's 2009. That's 10 years. It's a pretty long period of time for a business to like change its game plan. Hasn't really happened. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, the way music industry executives roll. But uh, they're doing real good. Big fat houses, fancy cars, big dinners. People made a lot of money. $16 a CD when the shift happened to CDs, people made a lot, a lot of money. That was a ton of dough, and a lot of it went to the label. You want me to change what I'm doing? I don't want to change. I'm only going to be here for like five more years. I have a contract. I'm making you know, a couple hundred grand a year, plus I get a couple million dollars on the record sales. I'm not changing anything. By the time I'm gone, it's going to be someone else's problem. That's really what happened, and now it is someone else's problem. So there used to be, I think, six major labels. Now there's four. There could soon be three. And then who knows 
what's going to happen? There could be none. That's kind of the landscape of where we are right now. Um, and what I think is most interesting about it is that, you know, in the context of like an entrepreneur class, is that when you have a business that's in need of change and that's, that's really flailing and sinking, that provides people like you with a lot of opportunity to come in with alternative schemes, alternative business models that can work real well. Look at a business, like a, a, an industry that already exists that's doing $30 billion a year, and you say, ah, what could I do within this, this business that's a little bit different? It's like, it's a good place to start, even though you, know, you might not end up there, but it kind of it gives you some kind of framework to start thinking about. So Q-Trax. Q-Trax actually was started in Australia, and it was started as basically a Napster. What happened was the, the founder realized, well, it's illegal. So like, what's my future there? How am I going to make money? It's very hard for these illegal services to make money. The founder of Q-Trax took a step back and he said, what am I going to do here? All right, first of all, you know, I really like this business. It's real powerful. You know, people are responding to it very quickly. You know, this is where it's all going. It's all going online. It's all going electronic. So his thought was, what can I do to make it legal? So what Q-Trax did um, is they went out, actually we went out in the past year, and got licenses from all the major labels. Each recording is called a master recording. And the master recording is, uh, you go into this, I pay for it, you go into the studio, rec you record a record. That record becomes a master. If I paid for it, I own the master. Very few artists own their own masters. If any of you are an artist, you kind of want to own your own master, or after a certain period of time, the master comes back to you. Why is that important? If anyone wants to sell, duplicate, or reproduce a copy of your record, they need to either own that master or license that master. It's called a mechanical royalty. So there's basically two pieces to any song. I record a song. One is you know, the actual recording of the song. Then there's who wrote the song. That's the publishing piece. That's the way you make money. Now, pub music publishing happens to be doing real well right now. Um, and part of that is because, as Ted was saying, it's catalog. How do you make money from catalog? Well, it's mostly licensing. Um, and it's also payments that various rights bodies and royalties have to make to you. So you, uh, music gets played on the radio, someone gets paid. Uh, music gets streamed on MySpace music, someone gets paid. You hear music in a video game, someone gets paid. You hear music in, on television, someone gets paid. So it's not just this CD, it's like wherever you're hearing the music. So that's, that's a good model, that's, a, that's, that's an upside of the model. And what's particularly good about that is everything that's happening online. So what Q-Tracks did, and you know, this, is, this is what's made it very difficult, they spent a lot of money on advances, paying the record labels in advance um, in the assumption that people would come, download that music for free, download as much of it as they want for free. What's really nice about a legal service is that it allows you the opportunity to really give people what they're looking for. So Q-Tracks is built off a whole database. It has all the album art, information about the artists, reviews, lists of everything, you know, all the records the artist has played on. People want music for free, so let's provide a legal version of free and a better version of free, better quality, uh, better software, better ability to find the songs, all the album art, you know, all this kind of content. Um, and that will, you know, move people away from this, you know, piracy kind of based thing. For all of the traffic on the internet, everything, everything that's going on, all broadband, what percentage is people using peer-to-peer? -peer? This is an estimate. Let's go 80%. So now you've got to look at this from an entrepreneurial perspective. So what's everybody doing? 80% of people are using this thing, and they're using it all day. Whoa, that sounds pretty powerful to me. How do we take advantage of that? So I guess that's kind of a good jumping off point to kick it back to you guys, you know, to think about in the context of this class. Um, take a look at peer-to-peer -peer in general. This appears to be the future of the internet. In addition to Facebook and MySpace and social networking and email, this is going to be a big component. I think it's a good lesson. The music business missed the boat. They really did. They missed the boat. They went from you know, 30, 40 billion to 30 billion, and then maybe they're going to go to 20 billion. So, got to start thinking about this stuff. How, how, is this, how are these technologies going to affect businesses that you may want to go in or businesses that you're going to work for um, and come up with some creative, aggressive, forward-thinking solutions?
to take care of it.